I'm DR, and this is Telco at 20. One of the biggest problems facing the telco industry today is how in the heck are we going to monetize the 5G network? It was the talk of MWC24, with telco execs even suggesting there won't be a 6G network if we can't figure out ways to generate new revenue. 5G will be about private networks, they cried. No, 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 no. It's all about network APIs. That's the ticket, others said. But so far, it's not clear if these ideas are going to work. But there's a woman out there who's trying super hard to come up with new ideas to monetize the network, and it's not me. It's Anna Yip. She's the CEO of Business Development and Deputy CEO at Singtel Singapore. Today, I'm talking with her live in New York City about creative ways Singtel is monetizing subscriber experiences, why it has a partnership to develop a telco-specific large language model, and how the company is collaborating with seven other telcos to launch a cross-border rewards program to build customer loyalty. Do I smell a telco super app? Maybe. So, let's take 20. Anna Yip is CEO of Business Development and Deputy CEO for Singtel Singapore, Hi, Anna. How are you? Hello, DR. So glad to be here. I'm so excited to have you on Telco in 20 and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's amazing. We're in New York City and Absolutely. the springtime in New York is beautiful and mm. you've been on a big U.S. tour and mm. hopefully that's been going really great for you guys. Yeah, we started on the West Coast, visited a number of companies and now we're on the East Coast yeah. and tonight we go home. I know. Mm. Wow. I'm so happy to meet you on my turf. And Thank you for coming. Right. Fly in. No worries. <laughs> so I, love, see you again. I yeah. love New York City. And so we met and spent some time together this year at MWC in Barcelona and we were on an AWS panel together. Mm. Obviously, we're both women in telco, and we're both actually new to telco. Mm. I came to telco in 2017 when I became CEO of a publicly traded telco software company based in Canada. <laughs> but tell me your story of how you came to telco. It's really interesting because I joined the telco industry more or less same time yeah. in 2016. Yeah. But let me step back a little bit. I started in McKinsey. Yeah. So I spent about 13 years there. Then I joined a bank. Then I ran the Hong Kong Macau business of MasterCard. Yeah. So I was in the bank, I was in payment. Then at that time, Smart Tong was looking for a new CEO because yeah. Smart Tong had wonderful people. And a lot of them have been in the industry for a long time, but they wanted to have a new perspective mm -hmm. of looking at the business and looking at new way of going to market right. and customer experience. Right. So I thought it was a bit scary because I've never run telco before, but it was also a fantastic opportunity to be able to learn something new. Right. So I had a wonderful time there. Then in 2020, my family had to move to Singapore. Yeah. So I had to step down. Then later on in 2020, as we were moving to yeah. Singapore, an interesting opportunity came up to right. join Singtel. Yeah, yeah. I joined Singtel in late 2020. Yeah. Now it's almost four years. That's awesome. I have a similar kind yeah. of interesting, not very obvious career path. Mm. It wasn't one function all the way to the top. And I always tell people, doors open. Mm. And a lot of times your instinct is to say no. Mm. You know, it's new or different. You take risk. Yeah. And so Singtel is one of the top MNOs in Asia Pac. The big question facing our industry is how we're going to monetize the 5G network. Everyone was talking about it at MWC. I think it's one of the biggest questions that we need to answer. And like you said, you have this fresh perspective, especially from the consumer side. You're bringing some new ideas around monetization. So what are the ideas that you've been trying out and how's it going? I think, first of all, for those of you who know Singapore, will know that the government is very progressive mm -hmm. and really, really want the technology to be at the leading edge yep. and driving economic development and continuously upgrading yeah. the economy and upskilling people. Yeah. So this yeah. is a big agenda. We got a government push and of course, being the leading national carrier, we also have to put in our investment to make sure that we are really up there. So we finished our 5G SA deployment years before the government deadline. So we became one of the first countries in the world to have nationwide yeah. 5G yeah, SA standalone. network. Yeah. Now what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, now what? Now what? Yeah. So let me start with the enterprise side because yeah. 5G enterprise use cases has been the key reason yeah. why we are all doing 5G. And I will give you two use cases that yeah. have been very successful. First one is with Hyundai, yeah. the Korean car companies. Mm -hmm. So Hyundai actually set up their most advanced factory in right. Singapore. Right. And Singapore, as a result, got the first 
automobile manufacturing after 43 years of absence. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. wouldn't think of Singapore as a manufacturing it, place, right. right? But actually, we are manufacturing Ionic 5 yeah. cars. The factory is super cool because yeah. it's actually very few workers. Yeah. It's mostly robots. Wow. And they're equipped with IoT. Yeah. With the sensors that allow high quality control. Yeah. Also live monitoring and instant feedback system. So all these have to run on a very powerful network with right. super low latency mm-hmm. and large bandwidth. So we work with them to set up this factory. Right. And what is really important is that they chose to set up this factory outside of Korea. They yeah. chose to yeah. do it in Singapore. Yeah. Usually a factory would be in a low cost place. Yeah. yeah. Singapore does not come across as a, not a low yeah. cost country. But it's yeah. the technology, yeah. right? And they right. love that. I think they probably feel it's easier for them to innovate in Singapore. And it's been a very, very successful collaboration. I give you another case yeah. with a pharmaceutical company, Zulik Pharma. So we work with them to create a 5G warehouse. Yeah. yeah. So we really improves the operational efficiency by mm-hmm. about 30%, mm-hmm. right? Also improves safety of workers yeah. and much faster in getting stuff, sorting out things and so on. So I think these are just two of the cases on the enterprise side that right. I think is the start. Yeah, There's yeah. still a lot more. Yeah, yeah. Now, I also give you a few cases of consumer side, Perfect. right? I think a few years back when we were about to finish the deployment, we already started experimenting with slicing. Yeah. So for the big events like Formula One, it's a night race in Singapore, it's a big event. Like F1, easily we have 200,000 plus people in space. How do you ensure that people can continue to use the network to upload and download, right? Right. So people start to be aware that, oh, this is an interesting capability, but we didn't charge them. Yeah. So in the events of the Taylor Swift concerts that yeah. just took place in Singapore, right. it was a massive thing. Right. And she did six concerts in Singapore, I mm-hmm. think. Each night, everyone is full, of course. Correct. There's about 60,000 people in the stadium. So in the normal days, it's very hard to send out messages, right. download things. Right. But this time, we actually commercialize it. So right. we charge, right? Right. Monetize the Monetize concert. Monetize the concert. Right. And you can send out anything. You can send out videos, pictures. Right. Because a lot of people like to download the lyrics, sing together. Yeah, Yeah. they want to show that they're there. Particularly for new songs, right? right? You know, she always has a surprise song on her set. Exactly. want to post first. Exactly. You You are the first one to be able to do that. Yeah. So it has been very well received. So I think we are looking at making the slides like an everyday thing. You know, Because if once in a while... It's hard to monetize, right? right? It needs to be every day. So we're right. looking at the security angle, yeah. like an end-to-end security slice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're working with companies like Palo Alto, you right. know, to create that slice yeah. and other ways to get to both enterprise and consumers. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, I go to concerts or a stadium for an athletic event or a game, mm. and it's so frustrating. And literally, I would pay $20 to have a better uh-huh. experience. Like, yeah. what do I need to do to just yes. like be able to text my daughter who's across the field. And it's really hard to move that capacity around, right? You build based on the average day, but every so often you have these spikes, you know, for a concert in the park or whatever it is. And so it's a tremendous It's really the customer experience that we need to focus on, right? Exactly. So if we find a day-to-day, it could be subway or some other situations that you really have a superior experience. People will pay for that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And so we're both super excited about how AI is going to impact the telco industry. Last year, Singtel became part of the Global Telco AI Alliance with SK Telecom, Deutsche Telekom, and Etisalat, Mm. EAND, to develop an industry-specific LLM. Mm. And so what's the scoop? Mm. What can you share? And I want to know, can I use it? Mm. Yes, yes, definitely. You have customers, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We are very excited about this. Actually, it has been in gestation for some time, more than a year. Yeah, yeah. We're excited about this because of several reasons. When we look at the LM, right, if you go beyond the typical use case right now, like you ask a question, which yeah. is more intelligent answer, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. personal assistant type. Yeah. But as a company, it's just not precise enough. Exactly. Because people will call us for various reasons, mm-hmm. right? It could be about the billing, about roaming, about yeah. the charge. I yeah. don't understand this. Mm-hmm. You cannot give very generic answer. Correct. Right? It needs to be much more precise, yeah, right? Yeah. So for us to fine tune the model, right. I think for each one of us, when we evaluate it, it's very expensive. Yeah. Right. So that's one reason. How do we scale? How do we put ourselves together in a yeah. group yeah. so that we can scale together? Number two is language. Yeah, yeah. Because if you look at Deutsche Telekom, ourselves, SKT, yeah. and latest one is actually SoftBank. 
Yeah, 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 each one of us, we have customers that are not using English yeah, exactly. as a first language. Yeah. So Singtel, for example, we serve about 770 million, yeah, so yeah. almost 800 million, right? Yeah, yeah. Massive. But a lot of these customers, they speak Thai, yeah. Bahasa Indonesia, yeah, yeah. you know, Takalog, and German and so on, right, right for right. Dodger Telecom. So that's why the scaling effects is even more, mm -hmm. because you have even less scale than English speaking. Yeah, yeah. And the third one is actually resources. Mm. Yeah, because everybody is looking for AI yeah. experts. Correct. But there's no point. We right. all chase after the same right. group of talent. Yeah. Why don't we just form a group, hire the people, and help us? Right. right. And are you pulling your resources around the GPUs as well? Are you planning to use a public cloud provider to provide the GPUs? I think I read that maybe NVIDIA is contributing yes. to this project. And so NVIDIA has got a partnership with us on the data center side. Right. Yeah, on the GPU side. Mm -hmm. So this would definitely be part yeah. of our consideration. I mean, that's the big thing right now. Yes, right? yes. I think I saw thing. Jensen Wong was saying, Two trillion worth of computers need to be replaced in the next 20 years with GPUs. I mean, it's just massive, right? Massive. Yeah. It's yeah, insane. Exactly. And so you announced another alliance with several other major telco operators like mm -hmm. Globe, Optus, Taiwan Mobile to launch a cross border rewards program across seven countries. So mm -hmm. this is another really cool idea. What's the vision? What are you guys trying to achieve with this alliance and with this program? We are really excited about that one as well. Actually, there's seven telcos. If you think back, actually, in the late 90s, when Star Alliance started, right? Yeah. That's the first time when the, the airlines, airlines, yeah, the mm -hmm. airlines, they come together. At first, they only have three. Yeah. If you look at the history, like three yeah. or four. Like, right. Then a couple of years later, more joined, mm -hmm. right? And then eventually, I think they have a lot more, yeah. right? Obviously. 2030 or something. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But they really start up in a very so, modest way, three. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is that when you have low cost carriers coming in, yeah. how can you really deliver the customer experience mm -hmm. in the end, that customer will stay with you. Yeah, it's yeah. really that simple, right? right? And in a way, if you look at our customers, when they travel, what do they need? They need network. Yeah. They need uh, transport. Right. Everybody who travels, you need some taxis right. mm -hmm. or subway, you know, yeah, yeah. or airport express. Right. They probably need food, yeah. right? Because yeah, yeah. these days it's also quite popular to order food in, mm -hmm. right? Deliver Especially in, Especially post-pandemic. Right? Exactly. People used to being able to order whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how the traveler's needs. How yeah. can we take care of that? Mm -hmm. We already have roaming deals. So it's not just about roaming. Yeah. It's about what's the next level yeah, we can provide yeah. that the low cost SIM card, the travel exactly. SIM cannot, yeah. right? So that is one angle. Then another angle is from a telco's point of view. A lot of us have already set up our rewards program mm -hmm. for our domestic customers. Exactly. Right? Yeah. This time, for the first time, what about we drive inbound yeah, yeah. to you? Because typically, it's quite hard to drive inbound customers right. Right, to yeah. your merchants. Mm -hmm. But this is one opportunity, right? When Taiwanese yeah. tourists come to Singapore, right. they don't need to open a new app. They right. just open their current app. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. we open up the API gateway. Yeah. They can see the catalog that Singtel has yeah. in Singapore. Yeah. And they can enjoy. Yeah, exactly. So vice versa for our customers going to Taiwan. Right? Yeah. So this is something that we feel quite excited about because yeah. it really takes the customer experience, travelers, yes. to a next level. Yeah. So I hope that when we launch, hopefully later on this year, yeah, more telcos will join us, yeah, including no. North American telcos. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. exactly. And I think that's one of the things that really changed travel was those rewards and frequent flyer programs where it really drove loyalty. Mm. And I think with all the unlimited and then dual SIMs mm. and then the MVNOs, it's really questioned the loyalty that you mm. have to your telco, right? Does it matter? In the past, there really was like the best network in a country. But in the United States, pretty much you can't really tell the difference. Don't tell those guys. They would argue the opposite. But when you talk to the average American, they're like, what's the difference? And so I think those are the ideas that telcos need to have is really focusing on that relationship with the subscriber. Yeah. You have to have a great network, of course. You have to have coverage totally. It's a given. Yeah, it's a given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have that now. And yeah. so now what's going to drive loyalty and yeah. what's going to cause them to spend more money with you yeah. and buy more things from you? So speaking of amazing world travelers, Taylor Swift mm. is traveling all over the world mm. and probably could be a big customer of yours and your travel rewards program. But I saw that you posted from the opening night of the Singapore concert, mm. probably because of the 5G network that mm. you were putting there. And so that concert was insane. The amount of work that she pours in. It's a four hour, 44 song. She's on stage dancing and just singing. I was there with my daughter. You feel kind of tired. After You're tired. Listening. And you're watching her perform. And she's the one. 
insane. It's really insane. The costume, she's wearing Louboutin shoes that are beautiful. I also went with my daughter to Houston. And so the big thing for people who don't follow Taylor Swift is, you know, the concert is the Eras tour. It's all these eras of her different albums. And she really encourages people to dress up as a different era. Mm. So my question for you is, which era did you go as? Oh, my God. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) I think my daughter went out in the earlier period yeah yeah yeah. not the floral you know not not, yeah lover i went as reputation yeah right i mean anyone who knows me knows that there's no way it would be lover yeah there's no (laughs) way in a million years i'm like What's the one where she's wearing mostly black? Right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. Me. That period. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. It's been really interesting to watch her because how she works out and how she eats and how she trains, it's really an athletic event right. for her. And I've seen rappers, I've seen hard rockers yeah. come to her defense of like, that girl doesn't use autotune. She's out there playing incredible. a real instrument. She's yes. playing the guitar or the piano. Yeah. And so it's quite incredible. I'm psyched that my daughter is looking up to her yeah. and learning from her work ethic because that's what it takes. Yep. Incredible. Well, Anna, this is such a great conversation. And it's so awesome to hear all the things you guys are trying and how experimental Singapore is. So thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Thank you so much, DR. Yeah. Really lovely to be here. It's thank awesome. You. Thank you. Stick around because we're ending each podcast with a Telco in 20 takeaway. I have 20 seconds to tell you something you need to know. Anna just shared some really neat ideas about monetizing your network. I can name a couple of reasons why this happens, but probably the biggest reason is your systems and your software. You have a spaghetti mess of customizations and integrations that have been created over decades of time, trapping valuable data across your enterprise. Even if you have a great idea you want to try like Anna, You have to pay your vendor for a change request that takes months to implement and roll out to your subscribers. How are you ever going to compete with tech companies that use SaaS tools available on the public cloud that can make changes to their software in minutes? Short answer, you can't. That's where Tatogi comes in. We're rewriting the software of the entire industry. We know how much software is going to change over the next five to 10 years because of AI. Telco execs need to realize that the way we think of user interfaces today will dramatically change. No longer will it always be a human completing a task. It'll be an AI agent or a self-help chatbot or even things done behind the scenes that you don't even know about. Are you making the necessary changes today to put your organization in position to take advantage of this massive shift? Or are you issuing yet another RFP written with requirements based on yesterday's legacy software design? that will waste millions of dollars and years of time to implement a solution that will only be thrown away later because the technology has changed. Don't be left behind on the shift to AI like you were left behind on the shift to the public cloud. Start adopting systems like Tatogi BSS Magic that can help you transform your organization to AI now. The great thing about BSS Magic is you don't even have to swap out your old systems. It works with your current patchwork of software and can provide real business value to you today. Let me help you get started. Send me a DM on LinkedIn or X at TelcoDR and we can set up a time to talk. You never know where I'm going to show up. In the meantime, tune into more Telco 20 episodes, like and follow, and leave us a five-star review. Don't forget to sign up for my super smart email newsletter, at least I think so, on TelcoDR.com and check out our amazing YouTube channel. Later, nerds! Later, nerds!